the basis of their intricate food web. A non-native invasive species is a plant or animal that is not native to an ecosystem and is likely to cause harmful effects to the environment or humans. There are many non-native invasive species of plants and animals on the refuge. Florida is home to more non-native wildlife species than any other region in the United States. And many have been documented on the JN Darling National Wildlife Refuge Complex or on adjacent areas. Over 439 non-native wildlife fish and invertebrates have been observed or documented and at least 123 are established and reproducing. Approximately 26% of all resident animals, I'm sorry, mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish are non-native. There are now more non-native lizards established in Florida than native species. Non-native species cause severe ecological, economic, and resource management problems in South Florida. Adverse impacts associated with introduced or established non-native invasive animals include habitat modification or alteration, direct prediction on native plants and animals, transmission of diseases to native plants, animals, and humans, and competition for the same niche. In general, habitat modification for human habitation favors the establishment of non-native animal species. Non-native wildlife thrives in human modified areas, quickly adapt and establish and displace native wildlife. Human planting of invasive pest plants provides a readily available food source, encouraging establishment and spread. Other factors which contribute to non-native wildlife establishment include a favorable subtropical climate, abundant supply of man-made lakes, ponds, an interconnecting network of canals, abundant ports of entry, and a thriving aquaculture and pet trade industry. definitely varies season per season in South Florida. All the animals in the refuge are wild, should be respected, and can potentially cause harm. To be safe, don't interact or feed the wildlife, avoid dangerous situations, keep your distance. If you approach and they change their behavior, you are too close. The best time to view wildlife is during low tide. And so since we are here in July, birding slows down significantly. Wading birds and some shorebirds will still be present. Mantis can be found in Tarpon Bay all summer. Early migrant birds may be found in the refuge, more like August than July. Alligators present, often visible at dawn and dusk. Sea turtle hatchlings start to emerge from the nests, usually more in August. Snook and redfish are abundant in the refuge waterways. Snook move into the shallows to feed, and that's more in September. If you're planning to come in between October to December, after the hot summer months, many shorebirds and colonial birds present. White pelicans and other migratory birds are arriving in more numbers. Impoundment drawdown to coincide with shorebird migration, which is October. Birding improves during December. Annual Christmas bird count takes place, sheep shed, and redfish move into re refuge shallows. If you plan to visit the refuge between January to March, one of the best times of the year for birding. Abundance of shorebirds, waterfowl, wading birds, passerines, and raptors. Alligators can be seen on cold mornings basking in the sun. Neotropical migratory birds are present and start migrating through March. Impoundment drawdown to coincide with shorebird migration. Osprey nesting peak in March. Florida mantis can, 
can see at the refuge all year long, except during extreme cold snaps. They like to go where the water is warm. Some adult spoonbills leave the refuge to head to nesting grounds in March. Juveniles are present year round. Cold water fish species present in the refuge during January and February. And speckled sea trout, sheep shed, and redfish in the impoundments on Wildlife Drive. And lastly, April to June, springtime. The beginning of April is a good time for birding. At the end of the month, the diversity and abundance of birds declines and stays low for the summer. Shorebirds and colonial nesting waterbirds are present. Neotropical migratory birds are present. White pelicans and other migratory birds begin to move north in April. Peak of wading bird nesting is April. Peak of snowy plover nesting on Sanibel reaches, beaches is in April. Black necked stilts. Yellow crowned night herons nest near the exit of the drive. That's through April to June. Mantis can be seen mating at the area beaches in April and May and seen in Tarpon Bay all summer. Mangrove cuckoo sites are more frequent in May. Sea turtles nest on Sanibel beaches May to October. Male alligators may be heard bellowing to attract a mate. Frog calls may be heard more frequently in the evening as rains begin in late May. Dolphins can be seen in Tarpon Bay all year long. Female alligators begin to lay eggs in June. Adult spoonbills return to slowly June. Many fish species are present. Snook spawning season begins in June. And tarpon season starts at the end of April and is in full swing on the island by May. Smaller tarpon can be seen inshore while larger individuals reside in deeper water. He was a political cartoonist with an eye towards conservation. His name is J. Norwood, J.N. Ding Darling. He went by Ding as a nickname. He was instrumental in the effort to block the sale of environmentally valuable land to developers on Sanibel Island. That parcel of land today has turned into the J.N. Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge. So he was born in Norwood, Michigan in 1876. Ding was to become one of the most well-known men of his era. A nationally syndicated editorial cartoonist, he was famous for his witty commentary on many different subjects that concerned the nation. An affable, dynamic, and talented man, Darling began his cartooning career in 1900 with his Six Six City Journal. After joining the Des Moines Register as a cartoonist in 1906, he began signing his cartoons with the nickname Ding, derived by combining the first initial of his name with the last three letters. In 1924, Ding was honored with the Pulitzer Prize for a cartoon that espoused hard work. He would again win his prestigious, this is, prestigious award in 1942. An avid hunter and fisherman, Darling became alarmed at the loss of wildlife habitat and the possible extinction of many species. As an early pioneer for wildlife conservation, he worked his theme into his cartoons and influenced a nation. I hope you enjoyed the scenic drive in Sanibel. And a few things you should know before we go. So a few questions I know everyone's gonna ask me in the comments. The best place to start your visit is in the Free Visitor and Education Center. It is open daily from nine to four, Monday through Saturday, and is closed on Sunday in all federal highways. Parking is free. Clean bathrooms and water bottle filling stations are present 
and the center is open for information desk and nature store only. The exhibits are currently closed due to COVID. The gift store has closed to provide more space inside the visitor center to a separate store uh, more close to the bridge inland on Sanibel. The wildlife refuge is open every day except for Fridays all year regardless of the holidays. The best time to visit is during low tide. So to know when it's low tide, check the tide charts online to see when the tide will be low. Just type that in. Florida is hot, so make sure you bring plenty of water, sunscreen, hats, bug spray, and wear a hat. And comfortable walking shoes to ensure that you're going to be comfortable and you can breathe properly in all this humidity. <laughs> the speed limits are strictly enforced. So don't speed whatever you do. Dogs are permitted on the drive on Indigo Trail and the Bailey Tract, as long as they are kept on a leash no longer than six feet at all times. Tarpon, um, the Tarpon Bay Explorers is the company within the park that runs kayak tours and water activities. The Indigo Trail is a hiking trail within the park that is off this drive that you saw that we passed earlier. It was on the left-hand side. The Bailey Tract is on Sanibel Island, but you have to drive to it. It's another part of Ding National Wildlife Refuge. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I look forward to making more videos with you guys. Enjoy the rest of the drive.